back again. Yeah. Yeah. Your extra 10 seconds. We are sitting here talking about all sorts of things other than baseball, but now we will resume baseball talk. I'm Lee Feinswag. You're watching Sports 225. I'm here with Chad Durbin, 17 years as a professional baseball player, a man who experienced every single high and low probably that you could possibly experience. Did you tell me once you celebrated eight minor league championships? Yeah, I want to say it was six. It was yeah. uh, it was significant yeah. and, and you know somewhat dubious in in that you're you're wanting to be in a in a big league situation and you're winning minor league titles, but it's better than than losing. And I feel like I grew a lot learning how to win. Whereas in, early in my career, I was shoved to the big leagues in a hurry and uh, got up there and had no idea how to survive, even uh, let alone win at that level. So, yeah, I've been through some stuff. I've seen, yeah. seen some things. Okay, so accordingly, you should have a handle on baseball etiquette as good as anyone in the business. And I say that from somebody who's been in every kind of clubhouse, good, bad, and different, yeah. and then who later in your career, you are the good clubhouse guy. Yeah, right? yeah. And who they kept. All right, so, so start with the home run thing. When you hit the bejesus out of a home run, like, you know, 440 feet, why can't you stand there and look at it for a second? Well, there's, there's ways to do that, and there's ways, if, it's, if you've always done that, if that's right. the way you've always done it, and the way guys watch highlights every night, if yeah. they're home or they see you do it, you know, if that's the way you hit home runs, then, you know, as long as your behavior is consistent, then you're not showing up the pitcher. Okay. But as soon as there's, you know, there are extra variables, like uh, the bat gets flipped, you know, Shooter McGavin type stuff. You know, as soon as that starts happening. <laughs> is, that, is that a Happy Gilmore yeah, reference? Yeah, yeah, it was a Happy Gilmore <laughs> reference. But as soon as that stuff starts happening, then, you know, his on-base percentage is going to go up because the next time he comes up, he's probably going to get moved. And if he doesn't move, he's really comfortable. It might hit him in the arm, might hit him in the leg. But you're going to throw in mm -hmm. just to remind him that, you know, that, that's it. I think I thought about this quite a bit. You, you text me back. We went back and forth yesterday. And I was thinking, you know, I've brushed guys back for years. And if I did want to hit a guy, I almost never missed. And that's why I think some guys... Well, because a guy's hip is a big target. It is, example. but if he knows it's coming, right. things change. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I think if, in all the years, there's just more coverage now. Um, I think a lot of guys, you'd get, you know, a guy hits a home run and he sits there and he watches it. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, the piper has to be paid afterwards. Um, sometimes the guys will take, there's vigilant justice in baseball. Guys are going to take things into their own hands. You know, heat of the battle, you know, whether it was Ryan Dempster throwing at a rod the other day or Strasburg and, and the whole debacle with, you know, Bryce Harper coming up and, and guys protecting. You know, it's a team, 25 guys in a clubhouse right. that look each other in the eye, ride buses together, know each other's families. I mean, that's, that's a tight knit group. And if you feel like somebody went out of, line to do something then there's going to be on the other side of it a reaction okay and so for me if a guy you know quote unquote pimped a home run or stood there and watched it a little too long i wouldn't necessarily hit the next guy which some guys think that's a best practice i would wait i would try to get eight up eight down as hard as i could especially when i was starting and then when he came up again i would throw the ball in to let him know that i want the outside corner that's mine and if i leave a ball over in the middle of the plate yeah it's my fault um, I don't like in a, in a four nothing game in the third inning. Guy hits a home run and he looks at it for a while. I don't think that's baseball. I think you put your head down and you run. Uh, Paul Konerko is a good example. I can't ever remember him hitting a home run and standing there and watching it. And he's not maybe not a Hall of Famer. Maybe could be if he keeps putting up numbers. Um, Chipper Jones last year felt like he stood there on a home run off Papelbon, a walk off, um, and it was after Ruiz hit a home run against us, and he felt like. You know, I'm I'm gonna pimp a home run if I get a walk off. Well, he all he did was skip one step, mm -hmm. and that was him standing there for a half hour. Yeah, you know, yeah. that was uh, so everybody does it differently. But um, there's just I don't like that part of the game that much. Um, but if you hit a walk off home run or you tie a game in a big situation off a closer uh, or a big eighth inning guy, you can stand there and watch it for a second. Just understand that that's a human being that's heart rate just went up when you did it yeah, on the yeah. mound. And there's, there's going to be, you know, a give and take. I mean, there's equilibrium. All right. I'll, I'll buy it. I think they're all crazy, but I'll buy into yeah. this. Okay. So then we got the A-Rod situation from yeah. uh, um, the other night. Yeah. Okay. And Ryan Dempster, who is new to the league. To the AL. He played yeah. there at the end of right. last year with yeah, the Rangers. Yeah. yeah. So there he is um, on a 3-0 count where he's got the pitch to burn anyway. Yeah. You know, drills A-Rod. 
And he does something that nobody else has been able to do the last few months, which is make people feel good or sorry for A-Rod. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I actually wrote an article for uh, Peter Gammons, uh, gammonsdaily.com. Mm -hmm. And in it, I asked the question, because I don't want to tell people how they should think, but I asked the question, is Bud Selig and is Major League Baseball turning A-Rod from the bad guy into a little bit of a martyr uh, with all the shots getting fired at him and being hung up there? and just kind of thrown out as the bad guy in baseball, where there's plenty of bad guys. Mm -hmm. He's not the only one. Um, but you're going to catch guys, like Ryan Debster's got 15 years of big league service time. It's not like this is his first rodeo. Right. If it were, you know, I mean, it was, he thought about this before it happened. And he's only hit, I think Girardi came out and said he hit like six guys in his last 390 innings or something like that. I don't yeah. know the exact numbers, but it's pretty accurate with where the ball goes. And the first pitch he threw was a non-aggressive pitch he didn't, he didn't, his arm speed was slower. Right. He was deliberately throwing the ball behind him. I, don't, I, don't, I think he just wanted the reaction. Then he threw the next two pitches in, and on the 3-0 count, he hit him. I got a pitch to burn. Yeah, you know. and I don't know whether or not he was going to miss him again in, or, I mean, he wasn't that sharp that day anyway, so no telling. But there was some, again, to use the term vigilant justice. I mean, you can't control whether guys are going to take things into their own hands or not, and he took it into his own hands. And, and it's two veteran players on, you know, in, in the biggest rivalry in, in sports, arguably. Obviously, there's other ones. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's a, I thought it was good, for, good and bad for baseball all at the same time because you had the Boston fans cheering mm -hmm. for, and booing A-Rod at the same time, and then you have A-Rod come back later and hit a big home run and help his team out, and Girardi gets thrown out of the game. I mean, it's just chaos, which is good in some aspects, but at the same time, the headlines shouldn't read A-Rod and Braun and all that when you got – Puig, you've got Boston leading that division. You've got Davis hitting all these home runs and Miguel Cabrera. You got a lot of good stories in baseball, and we've got to deal with, you know, seeing A Rod's name at the, you know, and, and he's talked about. It. I mean, I listen to ESPN radio, and ten minutes every hour is spent on A Rod, yeah. and 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 essentially as a derivative, talking about other people getting beaned. We're talking eight minutes right here. Um, uh, you know about, about him. it, and, and in the last minute of this segment. And by the way, this is Chad Durbin, former major league pitcher, and hopefully future major league pitcher. You never know. <laughs> yeah. uh, we got one more segment we'll visit, but to, to finish this one about Arod, are you okay with him using the system to appeal? And do you think that the 211 games, whatever they gave him, is is, is probably going to get cut back? It should be cut back. Yeah. I mean, it's unprecedented as a union. And I'm part of the players' union right now, even though I'm not playing. And you know, it's a sure. full uh, thing. And I and I and they've done great things. As a union, you have to protect unprecedented events. You can't, you know, can't let anybody limit your future earnings potential, which I actually think is a decent way to stop guys from doing PEDs. But you fought for 30 years, 40 years for it, um, for for earning potential to not be limited at all. So protecting A Rod as a union is very important. Um, but at, and, and at the same time, I want him to have the heaviest, you know, suspension that could possibly be thrown because not only was he cheating and twice now, um, if this one, this is alleged, uh, but there's obviously a bunch of evidence. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of variables in the air there. I don't, 211 is extreme. 100, yeah. 120. Yeah. I think that's fine. But you would hope that Major League Baseball would, didn't just go off half-cocked and give him no, 211 games. No, they know, games. They of know he's they guilty, yeah. Of course they do. He's Chad Durbin. Later on in the show, Glenn Gilbo, the Gannett News Service. I'm Lee Feinswag. We'll be right back with Chad here on Sports 225.